Yeah. Right, so you're in the gap, you're falling into the mantle possibly. North America, Eurasia. No single place epitomises the history of Iceland and the Icelandic nation better than Thing Thingvetla at the river Oxara. At Thingvetla, literally, assembly plains, the General Assembly was established around the year 930. It continues to convene here until 1798. And in fact, in 1798, there was an earthquake. And in the earthquake, we ended up with some of the land here dropping by about two meters. And all the people that came here to, to camp couldn't camp here anymore. So that's the end of, end of Parliament here. And it moved into Reykjavik at that point. Right, I've just learned this might be debatable, but there are five good spouting geezers in this world. Uh, there are two in Yellowstone. They are Steamboat and Old Faithful. Uh, Old Faithful, certainly very famous. Uh, there's Geyser in Iceland, but that one um, is dormant, so we're not going to count that one. Instead, we go to Strocker, which I'm going to look at in a minute, and we're going to see that hopefully get some good footage. Uh, Pohotu in New Zealand, and that is five. Strocker. Strocker. Yeah. Um, um, how, do we, how do we say the, the word beginning with G? Geyser. 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 Oh. There you go. Could there be another one to follow? Okay. Just filling in that little hole again, yeah. Brilliant. Right, we're in between spouts now. The water begins to boil below the surface about 127 degrees, and in some places at, the, at these guys' ears, the pressure and the temperature are just right for this rapid explosion. They release, the, they release this power, it causes a shooting upwards. Uh, this is Strocker, uh, and is gonna uh, spout every two to 10 minutes. So any time now we're gonna be expecting the next one. Geysers like Strocker are rare around the world due to the fact that many conditions must be met for them to form and thus only certain parts of highly geothermal areas can experience this phenomenon. First of all they have to have the intense heat source hot enough to boil the water. Secondly you need a flow of underground water. In the case of Strocker this comes from the second largest glacier in the country, Langjökull. Meltwater from the glacier sinks into the surrounding porous lava rock and travels underground in all directions. Finally you need a complex system of plumbing. This allows the geyser to erupt rather than just steam from ground like a fumarole. Yes. Is there another one? Ooh! Oh, hey. Wow. Well, that's taken quite a while. I'm happy with that. Gulfoss waterfall. Truly and objectively, absolutely stunning. Such power, such volume of water, such energy, amazing. The water here travels from the glacier Langjökull before cascading 32 meters down Gullfoss in two stages. This here is the lower of the two stages. This is the upper of the two stages of the waterfall. It should actually be thought of as two separate features. The first shorter cascade here is 11 metres tall, whilst the second drop is 21 metres, although it looks a lot further than I have to say. The canyon walls on both sides of the waterfall reach heights of up to 70 metres, descending into the great Golfoshjoka Canyon. Geologists believe that this canyon was formed by glacial outbursts at the beginning of the last ice age. In the summertime, approximately 140 cubic metres of water surges down the waterfall every second. Whilst in the winter, this number drops to about 109 cubic kilometres. With such energy, of course, we shouldn't be surprised that it's easy to get drenched. And I've just walked down that path over there, which is very icy, very slippery and very damp with all this spray. Right, I've received some criticism about a lack of outro. This is the outro. Bye.